What if I told you that you could become an expert in coding within months just by following these exact steps that I'm about to show you? I taught myself how to code, I made all the mistakes, and now I have my dream job. So this video is all about what I would do differently if I was learning how to code today. So tip number one is to choose an area that you're interested in. You don't just learn how to code, you wanna focus on something specific that really excites you. Whether that's iOS, Android, web development, data science, something that you'd be proud to be doing, you need to narrow down your focus to that specific area of software engineering. The other thing too is that coding can be very hard. So by having something that you're interested in, that kind of gives you the extra willpower and grit to, to get through those tough moments. Because if you don't enjoy it, it's a that much harder. By choosing something you're interested in, you will be getting enjoyment from the process rather than some external reward like money, users, or like a press article that was written about you. Working for external rewards is incredibly dangerous to the sustainability of your habit of coding, which brings me to my next point. Point number two, build the habit of coding and then protect it. So this breaks down into two parts. Number one, build the habit. So what I would do is I would schedule one, two, three hours aside every day just to focus on learning how to code, whether that's a tutorial, building your own project, whatever it may be, scheduling time specifically for that is super powerful. There's a lot of productivity tips out there I would just say find out what works for you. Uh, look up time boxing, use a to-do list, track on your calendar like I try to do. I make kind of make it a game with streaks and try to beat my old score. Also read Atomic Habits. It's incredible. It's life-changing. It's just about building habits in your life. You need to do whatever you got to do to make this a regular thing. Daily is best, but don't go too long without coding. I would shoot for coding every day, even if it's for, you know, 20 minutes, if that's all you can get that day. But I think a very focused, intense six to 12 months is better than the alternatives. Then once you have that habit, you need to protect it. When I say protect the habit, I mean you need to be careful about the requirements that you're setting for yourself to be able to do this thing. Stay with me here. We already established that you're going to enjoy the thing that you're working on. So you're not gonna be seeking some external reward. This is so important for the long-term success and lifespan, I guess, of this skill that you're trying to build. What happens is if you're working for some external external reward, you're accidentally making it harder and harder to do the actual effort. And then what happens is you end up getting burnt out. I learned this from the Huberman Lab podcast by Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist out of Stanford. I will link the two episodes below that really changed my perspective on this. But in summary, here's what you need to know. Focus on getting enjoyment from the effort, from the process, from the work. This is the key to mastery. The dopamine reward system can be explained on the podcast. They talked about a study where they observed children that like to draw and they pulled these kids aside and started giving them a golden star and like rewarding them when they started drawing then when they took the golden star away the external reward the kids didn't want to draw as badly this is a temporary thing that does return but it's fascinating to me so you need to be able to protect your habit from external rewards that is half of it you need to protect this habit by focusing on i love doing this for the sake of doing it the other really important part about this is to not stack dope dopamine inducing mechanisms while you're trying to build this habit. All of these things spike your dopamine, which may seem great at first because you feel ready to go. But if you make that the requirement that you need in order to start coding, then coding gets harder and harder and harder, just like the external rewards. This is a mistake that I made and totally regret, but basically here's what you need to focus on. Don't stack too many of these things together. If you want to code regularly with coffee, like that's that's fine. But if you drink coffee while listening to music, while vaping, while you're on an Adderall or taking some energy drink, then the next time you go to code, you, you need all of those things to feel good again. And it, it starts this addiction cycle that's a nightmare to deal with. So just be careful about the standards and requirements that you're setting for yourself as you build and sustain this habit. It should be, I love coding, I'm gonna sit down and code because I enjoy it. Caffeine here and there, music here and there, sure. But you don't need caffeine to code, you don't need music to code. You love coding just because you love coding. This is very important to me. This is a game changer that it's kind of right in front of our faces. I'm gonna link to the two dopamine episodes that I learned a ton on Huberman Lab. Okay, so 
What would I do next? I would focus on learning by doing. I did way too many tutorials in the beginning. I was self-taught and didn't go to a computer science course or anything. I majored in marketing, so I wasn't a computer science major or anything. So if I could go back and restart, I would have a one-to-one -one ratio of tutorial personal project. And going one step further, I would begin building my portfolio immediately. So when I see learn by doing, it kind of breaks down into three buckets for me. Like what would you learn by doing? One of them is personal projects. So you have your tutorials that will always be there. They'll always be available. You need to start with tutorials. You need to learn the basics. You need to learn the syntax. And then from there, you can start following along and funnel these tutorials into your personal projects. Then I'm gonna keep that personal project. Then I will upload that to my portfolio portfolio of some sort. So the first bucket, like I said, is your personal portfolio. You should learn the basics of Git and GitHub and start your portfolio immediately, especially if you're someone who's trying to get a job. Having a portfolio of apps that you've created, especially ones that you've launched, is everything. I was intimidated by Git in the beginning, which is totally ridiculous because everything about coding can be intimidating, but I waited too long to do this, so that's a change that I would make if I started today. The second bucket that I would actually focus on is debugging skills. So this is something that you use a lot like in the job market. So how you can do this is by doing tutorials on debugging. You can focus on your debug skills by reading others code, contributing to like open source projects, or like really troubleshooting and trying to get to the nitty gritty of your own uh, bugs. This was a weakness of mine when I got into the job market. I was entirely focused on building the new things rather than fixing or maintaining code. So get comfortable with like understanding other people's code that they've written and open source is a great way to do that. If I was learning today, I would put a, a special emphasis on debug skills, like how to set breakpoints, how to use the, the different debug tools that are available in Xcode. And then the third bucket is to specifically focus on skills that employers are looking for, specifically like interviewing, data structures, syntax, algorithms, things that will help you land that job that almost directly apply to the job when you get there as well. So you can, you can learn these by focusing on like the computer science fundamentals of whatever it is that you're focused on. Ideally, when you're going into the job market, you have a strong balance of like, here's what I've built, here's what I'm passionate about, here are my personal projects, as well as, oh yeah, I also covered these bases and I know the fundamentals and I interview very well. A great habit to build like early on is to do one to two coding problems a day, like algorithmic interview questions, like lead code or algo expert, which I'll share more at the end of this video, but it's kind of a stay ready so you don't have to get ready sort of thing, where when I was going into the job market, I had to dedicate like three months to just pounding coding interviews and learning all of this at once, and it was it was a bit nightmare. Okay, so this one's different from when I was learning. You need to be resourceful and specifically use AI to your advantage. Having a coding assistant like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot is a little dangerous if you're leaning on it too much because you might not learn anything it's like someone giving you the answers to the tests. But if you use it the right way, it's like a perfect teacher that you can just ask questions to and learn all these little lessons from. So you would be foolish not to lean on AI at all. But I would just say don't lean on it too much. I would say use it as a coding assistant in the ways that like, oh, I'm stuck. Tell me why this code isn't working. And then it tells you and then you could be like, well, explain that to me like I'm a student or explain it like I'm five. Like help me understand this. It's fascinating and I'm incredibly jealous that you have this resource now. Okay, so my last point, my biggest misconception was first you learn how to code and then you know how to code and then you code. That's not how it works. I haven't stopped learning since 2015 when I started. Recognize that you will never know everything and that everyone has imposter syndrome. Everyone. It's fine. You're always going to be learning new skills. Embrace that. Don't be embarrassed by that. Don't be embarrassed to ask questions. Recognize that, oh, this thing goes very, very deep in every little area. You're not going to know everything and you will always be learning. So adopt that mindset early on of like, I will always be learning something new. If you've made it this far, here are my favorite resources. Now, first, iOS specific, I would look at designcode.io. The design skills are the best across the board and you won't find it anywhere else in terms of tutorials for iOS specific. So you're learning design and code at the same time. It's incredible. I have to mention hacking with Swift. Paul Hudson is amazing. He has every
everything that you are curious about on his website, hackingwithswift.com. So for iOS people, check those two out specifically. And then outside of that, appcoda.com, another great resource. I'm gonna mention YouTube again, but there are a ton of helpful iOS engineers, iOS tutorials on YouTube as well. So when in doubt, just search YouTube. As far as interviewing and job prep, I would check out Algo Expert was my favorite resource. People love Leak Code as well. You can build like a strong profile on Leak Code. And then for mock interviews, I would check out Pramp.com and interviewing.io. Those are places where you can schedule mock interviews to kind of simulate that real interview environment. Lastly, general online courses, whether you're studying iOS or Python or data science, machine learning, whatever it may be, Udemy, Coursera, and YouTube are all just a plethora of courses and knowledge and things waiting to be learned. So check those out. Good luck. Comment on this video. Ask me questions. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.